Adobe Character Animator CC lets you animate any Photoshop or Illustrator file using your face and voice with your computer's webcam and microphone, making performance capture animation fun and accessible. When you first open up Character Animator, you'll see the Start workspace. You can always reach this screen by clicking Start in the workspace bar on the top. Let's start with the blank face template by clicking the picture on the left. This does two things, imports the face into a Character Animator project, and also opens up the master artwork in Photoshop. We'll start in Character Animator. In your project panel, you'll see two items listed, a puppet and a scene. Think of puppets as your actors and scenes as their stage. If you double-click a puppet, you'll switch to Rig Mode. This is where you can prepare your puppet for animation using tags, behaviors, triggers, and other animation tools. If you double-click the scene, you'll enter Record Mode, and see a live version of your puppet reacting to your face and voice in the upper right corner. The webcam and microphone icons should be blue, meaning they're active. Your webcam video should show up automatically, but if it doesn't, try clicking the menu icon in the panel header and select Switch to Default or Next Camera. When you talk, you should see a green audio meter show up. If that doesn't work by default, just go to Character Animator Preferences on Mac or Edit Preferences on Windows and select a working microphone input. To calibrate the webcam to your face, make sure you're close to the camera and in a well-lit area. Relax your expression, look at the character in the scene panel, and click the Set Rest Pose button. This sets your current face position as the default starting point, and it's a good practice to do this every time before performing. Now, try moving your head left and right. Look around with your eyes. Blink. Raise and lower your eyebrows. Say something. Your natural movements and speech translate into a real-time animated character. Let's start customizing this character a little bit by going over to Photoshop, which should have the underlying PSD file already open. You can always edit your master artwork from Character Animator by selecting a puppet in the project panel and going to Edit, Edit Original. Take a look at the Layers panel. The structure and naming in the Photoshop file is important. You always want a top-level group with a plus symbol in your character's name, and a group named Head inside it. If you do this, any artwork inside this head group will move with your own head movements inside Character Animator. We'll cover the facial features in other videos, but for now, let's give this puppet a different background skin. Currently, that's the dashed line oval layer at the bottom called Face Background. With Face Background selected, click the New Layer button below to add a new blank layer above this one. Then find the Shape tool in your left toolbar, usually this is a rectangle by default, and hold over it to reveal more choices. Select the Ellipse tool and make sure the type in the upper toolbar is set to Shape. Click the Fill swatch and feel free to pick any color as the background skin. Then start in the upper left corner and click and drag to make a new oval background layer. You can use the Move tool to adjust its position and then delete the old face background layer below. Then go to File, Save. When you return to Character Animator, your edits will automatically sync up and appear. This is the basic foundation for building custom characters. You could add as many layers as you want with any kind of artwork inside your head group, and it will show up inside Character Animator. Feel free to experiment with your own style and have fun. Eyes and eyebrows in Adobe Character Animator CC give your character a wide variety of expressive possibilities. When you look around, blink, or move your eyebrows, your animated character does the same. We'll continue with the blank face Photoshop template from Character Animator Start Workspace. In Photoshop, at the top of the head group, we see two layers, plus left eyebrow and plus right eyebrow. There are a few things to note here. First, when we talk about left and right, we're talking about the characters left and right, not the left and right of the screen. Second, when you add a plus in front of a layer's name, that's a special code to Character Animator to make that layer what we call independent, meaning it can move on its own without affecting other layers. If you were to take the plus off the eyebrow layers and save and return to Character Animator, notice how the eyebrows are pulling and warping other layers as they move. If the layer names start with plus instead, they'll move on their own. A plus in Photoshop or Illustrator gets translated into this crown icon in Rig Mode and Character Animator, allowing you to easily toggle and experiment with making parts independent. 
Because these layers were precisely named left eyebrow and right eyebrow, when the artwork was imported, those layers got automatically tagged as eyebrows. You can check this in rig mode by selecting the layer and looking at the tag section in the right properties panel. You can toggle between a visual or text-based tag system. So if I had just named this layer eyebrow or brow or layer 472 final, I can easily tag it here. The character is controlled by a set of rules called behaviors. When you import a character, you get a standard behavior set automatically, which you can see in record mode in the properties panel on the right. The eyebrow controls are in the face behavior, so twirling that open reveals several options to customize the eyebrows. Eyebrow strength exaggerates or minimizes the amount of vertical eyebrow movement as you move your own eyebrows in the webcam. High numbers move up and down a lot, while zero means no vertical movement at all. Raised and lowered eyebrow tilt determines how much and in which directions the eyebrows will pivot in their highest and lowest positions. You can experiment with these parameters to customize the level of expressiveness that you want. Let's take a closer look at the eyes back in Photoshop. Each eye has its own group, left eye and right eye, each with three layers inside, an eyeball, pupil, and blink layer. The relationship is pretty simple. The pupil stays inside the shape of the eyeball, and because we wanted to move around without pulling on other layers, we add a plus to make it independent. The blink layer only shows up when you blink, and doing so will hide the other layers in the group, the eyeball and the pupil. If you return to your scene in record mode in Character Animator, you can see that eyes are controlled by the eye gaze behavior, which has several options. A red dot means that something is armed for recording, so by default we can see that the eye gaze is looking for camera input, following your own eyes in the webcam. If we arm mouse and touch input, we can control the pupils by dragging a mouse or fingers on a touch-enabled screen. Towards the bottom, snap eye gaze is checked by default, meaning the eyes will dart around to one of nine different common positions, depending on where you're looking in the webcam. But unchecking this will make the pupils more free-moving. So these eyebrows and eyes are a basic example, but you could customize them into whatever size, shape, and color you want in your own unique style. Once you save, any edits will automatically show up in Character Animator. For more advanced users, there's also the option of tracking your upper and lower eyelids, or adding clipping masks to prevent the pupils from floating off the eyeballs. The eyes are one of the most expressive parts of a character, so it's worth spending some time tweaking the parameters until you get the effect that best fits your character. When a puppet in Adobe Character Animator CC hears a voice, it analyzes the sound in real time, and picks a mouth shape that fits. So as you talk, the mouth is constantly switching to match whatever syllable is heard, resulting in automatic, instant lip sync. Continuing with the blank face Photoshop template from Character Animator's start panel, you can twirl open the mouth group to see all the different potential mouth shapes. There are 14 total here, so let's break them down. Three of these, neutral, smile, and surprised, are silent mouths and only show up when nothing is being said. In these cases, the shape of your mouth in the webcam will control what shows up here. Neutral is the default state and the one that any puppet with a mouth should have. Smile and surprised are additional silent mouth shapes that will get triggered if you smile or open your mouth in surprise. The other 11 are audio-based mouths, called visemes, and they'll show up when something is said. By naming these mouth shapes exactly this way and putting them in a mouth group, Character Animator will know what to do with them once they're imported. Armed with this knowledge, you can create your own custom mouth sets, either by tweaking a template mouth like the one provided in the blank face template, or creating your own from scratch. Making a responsive mouth set can take some time and experimentation, so the one included in the blank face template is a great starting point. Feel free to use it exactly as is, or just a guide for your own custom creations. In Character Animator, if you double-click the blank face scene in the project panel on the left, it will automatically open up record mode. If the microphone icon is on and the lip sync behavior is armed, then you're ready to record audio. For now, you can disarm all the other behaviors by clicking the red dots next to them. If you click the red record button in the scene panel and start talking, Character Animator will record data for the armed lip sync behavior. Clicking the record button again to stop will create two things in the timeline, a waveform of your audio and a lip sync take with all of the individual visemes below. 
By dragging the left and right edges of any visine, you can trim or expand how long it appears. You can also slow down playback by clicking the number next to the timeline controls and selecting a slower speed, making timing edits a little easier. You can also right-click any visine to swap it out with any other one, with some accompanying suggestions to help guide you for sounds that share the same visine. Tapping the first letter of a visine on your keyboard will also do a switch. You can remove a visine by right-clicking and choosing Silence, and right-clicking on an empty area of the visine track will allow you to create a new visine. Audio doesn't need to be recorded live. If you're working with voice actors or recording in another program, you can go to File, Import, and bring in external audio files for your voices. Then you can drag them into your scene, select the puppet you want to apply the lip sync to, and go to Timeline Compute Lip Sync from Scene Audio. This will analyze the audio file and create the lip sync track from its contents. Accurate looking lip sync is a critical part of a believable animated performance, so it's worth spending the time to make your mouth look as great as possible. When setting up a body in Adobe Character Animator CC, you can add rigging information to determine how a character moves and which parts you can control. In the start panel, let's take a look at a simple human character by clicking Chloe, which opens her up in Character Animator and Photoshop. Because this version of Chloe already has body rigging associated with it, we can start from scratch by making a new copy of her. In Photoshop, double-click the name of the top plus Chloe group and rename it to plus Zoe. Then we can go to File, Save As, and save her as a new file named Zoe. Back to Character Animator, you can click File, Import, find the Zoe PSD file, and import her. Double-clicking Zoe will open her up in Rig Mode. We'll come back here in a minute, but for now, let's add her to a new scene by clicking the clapboard icon in the lower left corner of the project panel. This adds the puppet to a new scene. If you select the scene in the project panel by clicking it once, you'll see the scene properties on the right. Here you can customize the scene's parameters like the width, height, duration, and frame rate. If you wanted to reposition your character, you can make sure it's selected in the timeline below, twirl open the transform properties on the right, and adjust the X or Y position values as needed. Returning back to rig mode, we can see that the top level Zoe group has two groups inside, a head group and a body group. Setting up a file like this ensures the body will always move along with the head as expected. Note that neither of these groups are independent. If we made the head independent by adding a plus in front of it in Photoshop or toggling the crown icon in rig mode and character animator, it would move on its own and look disconnected from the body. So it's always best to keep both non-independent. But if we look at Zoe's scene, her feet are swaying back and forth with her head and not connected to the ground like we probably want. We can fix this by returning to rig mode and adding what we call handles, or invisible data points that determine how the artwork behaves. To add a handle that will pin the feet to the ground, make sure the body group is selected, click the handle circle in the lower toolbar, click a foot to place a new handle there, and tag it as fixed via the right hand properties panel. Because fixed handles are commonly used, there's also a shortcut, the push pin icon. Clicking on the artwork with this, known as the pin tool, will quickly create fixed handles, so you can add several to keep her grounded. Returning to the scene will confirm that her feet are stationary as expected. Back to rig mode, we can see that Zoe has three items inside her body group, a right arm group, a left arm group, and a body background layer. The arm groups are independent, marked with crown icons, because we want them to move on their own without necessarily pulling the rest of the body. By default, the independent group's origin shows up right in the middle of the artwork, and a dotted green line shows what's controlling it, in this case, the origin of the group it's inside, the body group. But we want our arm to pivot from the shoulders, not the belly button, so we can use the select tool from the bottom toolbar and drag the origin until it hits the shoulder. As soon as the origin overlaps with other artwork it can connect to, the connecting artwork turns green, and the origin gets a green circle around it. Now that her right arm is properly connected, we can add another handle to let us move this arm with our mouse or fingers on a touch-enabled device. With the right arm group still selected, select the dragger tool in the bottom toolbar and click on the hand to add a draggable handle. Now when we return to our scene, if we click and drag, 
we can move and control the arm group. By default, it's bending like a spaghetti noodle, so we may want to add some more structure to it. Back in rig mode, with the right arm group selected, you can click the stick tool and drag over top where the forearm and bicep would be to draw some simple scaffolding, leaving a little room in the middle for the elbow. Returning to the scene, now the arm bends more like we might expect from a human arm. The dragger behavior on the right determines how draggable handles work. If after move is set to return to rest, then when you let go of a dragger handle, it will return to its initial position. Changing the return duration value eases the handle back to that default position over a period of time. Changing after move to hold in place will instead make the dragger poses stick in place, kind of like an action figure. You can do the exact same thing with the left arm group. Drag the origin to the shoulder, add a draggable handle to the hand, and finally, draw two sticks for the forearm and bicep. And with that, you've now got the foundation of a basic animated character. Other characters might have a lot more bells and whistles, but most of them follow this general head and body grouping structure. In the start panel, you'll find several other example templates to learn from, and clicking the See More link above takes you to a page where you can download even more. Good luck creating, and have fun.